Hey people, so welcome back or welcome to my channel. I wanted to do something that I've been doing for work here lately in the mornings. It is not a hard eye look to do, but something that you can do if you don't want to go completely bare eyed. But I think that this is a fairly simple look. I think that it's very easy, very complimentary, very flattering. I've gotten several compliments on it and I think anybody can do it. So if you want to see how I accomplished this look, just keep watching. Okay, so since is the, oh, that's, doesn't even make sense. Okay, so since is this, since, since this is my early work morning type of routine, I don't always know if I'm gonna do my eyes. So I actually do my face first, which is what I, do, I don't normally do, but since this is not a heavy duty eye, we're gonna start with the face. I already did my vitamin C for the morning, and so I'm going to go in with the Tatcha Water Cream and the Debronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine, Sunshine Drops that I mix together now that have now made their way into my makeup routine. So I mix those two together. I just take the end of my brush on the back of my hand, nothing fancy. And I just put that all over my face. The Debronzy Drops. Um, if you want to read about them they have benefits other than giving your skin this subtle color um, and when you're as pale as I am it's really nice to have don't want to put the de bronzy drops all over your face by themselves because they're too potent I haven't tried it if you want to buy them and try that let me know how it comes so I just put that all over, like I even put it all over my eyes, my lips. Because this is my first dose of moisturizer for the day as well. So I'm putting this everywhere. So if it's a sunny day, um, I do use this Drunk Elephant Umbra, Umbra, I, I'm sorry if I'm not saying that right. Uh, Umbra Tint Physical Daily Fence Protection SPF 30. This stuff is very comfortable. You should be wearing SPF on your face anyway, underneath of your makeup. I know it can be very hard to find stuff that is not comfortable and doesn't break you out and isn't greasy. This stuff is awesome. If you don't want something tinted, they have very, they have something that is untinted. And it's interesting because if you put it on, you're gonna see some glitter and that made me nervous. But you don't like see glitter on your face. It's not like you took some highlight and went <laughs> all over your face. And actually, if you don't want to put on any makeup, and you just want to put this on and run out of the house, I think it's kind of cool to just give yourself kind of a little healthy glow and try to even out your skin tone, you know, if your skin tone doesn't look like mine. Super patchy. So next, um, on top of this stuff, I put on my makeup primer. Still got to put on makeup primer. I got this in my Ipsy bag, which I've actually upgraded to the Ipsy box, where it gives you the full um, size products. And this is Yensa, Y-E-N-S-A, Color and Face Tone Up Primer Essential Glow. Um, eight Super Blacks Essence is what it says, I think. Um, I haven't heard about this before, and it said Super Glow, so that got me nervous. Since I have been using this, I have not had to use my Professional Matte Rescue. This stuff really helps keep me matte, and it's amazing. Um, it's interesting because it's kind of this thick cream looking stuff um so I can't believe it does that but it does and I've been using it here during the summer where it's really hot and humid and it's been doing a really good job next I put on my foundation and this is the Fenty Beauty foundation the pro filter soft matte longwear foundation I'm currently using the color 185. I love this foundation. Um, I used to wear the Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation and um, I love this even more than that. You can put it on as light or as heavy as you want. So I use my really dirty um, Fill Technique sponge dampened and I put on one good pump and I start at my jaw area and I put the majority of the product down on my jaw and then I just work my way up to the inside of my face 
and this way I feel like I don't get a bunch of cake face. Work my way inward. I do put this over my lips like this because this does oxidize and if I like tiptoe around my lips I'll kind of get this like white ring around my lips where I didn't put enough foundation and it's my skin showing through and it looks weird. Now for my nose, I do put an extra dot all by itself because my nose is oily and it gets red really easily. So it does need its own dose of product. So just on my nose area, I will put extra product and make sure that's covered up really well. And if you don't feel like you got enough product in here, this is your chance to get more product in there too. I still use my T God damn it. I still use my Tarte CC under eye corrector. I like to put this on before I put on my foundation and I for some reason keep forgetting to do that. Actually, it's probably because I keep adding all this shit to my makeup routine. You can put this stuff on after your foundation. I feel like this works a lot better if you put it on before. I use this e.l.f. concealer brush and I put this on my under eyes to conceal my circle. And then I have these brown spots that I talk about all the time because they make me sad. But I got them from hormones and sun damage because I did not wear sunscreen on my face. Now we're going to continue and finish on with our foundation. I don't put a full pump like I do on my face for my forehead, but I do put almost probably half a full pump. Just pat that along. And do your best to get it all the way up to your hairline. Just try not to get it in your hair. And then go along your ears and your temples as well. And then when I've got most of the product all over my face, I also go over my eyelids. Because I'm going to kind of use the um, foundation and my concealer as my um, eye primer if I do my eye makeup. Then I put a generous dose, just probably like I did on my face initially, and I put it all on my neck, and my jawline, because I don't want to have that line of demarcation. And I let it fade all the way down to my chest. Next I'm going in with the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer and I'm using the color 170. Um, I don't go in hardcore with this stuff when I'm putting on a full face of concealer. I just use it on my under eyes. If I'm more broke out, I will use it to help me out with my breakouts. But um, I'm not too, too bad today. So just take that little technique sponge and get into your inner corners the best you can. And then I kind of go up. Because it's good for your, my eyes naturally droop down. So I try to give the illusion that they're actually going up. And then you kind of go down onto your cheeks too. Because you don't want that concealer to just stop at your eye bags. And then when I have almost all of the product, well, when I have all of the product on my under eyes done, I go on top of my eyelids again and just tap all over my eyelids. Because I found that this is just, for the eye makeup look that I do with this, this is a good enough um, primer. So um, this stuff will crease if I wait. So I um, set my under eyes first thing now. So I'm going to use my Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. And I'm going to use my Sigma Tapered Highlighter F35 brush to do this. And just set my under eyes kind of quickly now. And this is also one more defense against those dark circles if you have them. And then I just kind of take a whatever's left on the brush and set my eyelids too. And that just keeps it all from creasing. And sets your eyelids and... Now you're done with your under eyes and I don't have an issue with creasing really now. All right, so now I'm going to do my eyebrows and I wait to set my um, 
face until after my eyebrows because now I've gotten a little more serious about my eyebrows and I have to do some correcting and if I do the powder and then I try to correct my eyebrow mistakes with the concealer it causes issues because now I've got powder on my face so um, I'm gonna set them I'm gonna set my face after my eyebrows so I am using the brow stylist shape and fill by L'Oreal Paris and this is actually in light brunette and I think in my last video I said dark blonde which was a lie if I said that so sorry guys I still have very sad sparse eyebrows I've been doing my best but you can only grow what you can grow so I'm just gonna go through this really quickly and get these suckers done I go in with my concealer and then my elf um, concealer brush and I go in and clean them up We're going to set our face and next I'm going to be setting it with the RCMA translucent powder I cannot find my actual RCMA powder bottle but that's what I'm using and I put it in this case just so that's a lot more user-friendly I use my real techniques sponge dampened and I press that everywhere that I'm gonna be putting bronzer and blush if you don't have oily or combination skin, um, this step may not be crucial for you. Um, but if you do like me, I don't think you can not set it with some sort of powder. And I use a translucent powder so that I'm not adding more product to my face. Because if you use a powder foundation, you are adding an extra layer of foundation. And if you want more product on your face, then that's what you want to use. But uh, I don't want to use any more product. I'm using this product specifically with the Damp Technique sponge um, as a baking factor that will help keep the oils at bay well, as well. So I put that everywhere on the T-zone. I do not put it in my smile lines my cheeks are my um, under eyes though okay so now is when I move on to the eyes first thing I do is I actually move on to my bronzer I'm using the Tarte Amazonian clay bronzer in Amazonian princess and the brush I'm going to be using is my Sephora brush and the number is the Pro crease number 10 I think it's just a fluffy brush so all I'm doing is I'm going in and defining my crease a little bit so doing the same thing that you would do from the outer to the inner corner tiny bit darker than I guess your first transition shade but you're kind of gonna use it like you would your first transition shade um but you just want to give this light glue and light definition from outer to inner and then do those windshield wiper motions. And you can go in with as much of this as you want. I, I don't go in with a ton because I'm not going in for a huge... I'm going in with more stuff and this is just to define your crease. Okay, next I'm just going in to define my top lash line with a dark brown. It does not matter what dark brown you really use. Um, I normally have been using, I'm still holding on to my Becca Rouge palette and I have been using this guy right here. Um, I've used this um, 
Morphe Pure Nude 3B palette before and it's got this guy right here called Pure Hue. No, sorry, Deep Hue. Um, any sort of dark brown, if that's what you want to use to define your top lash line, will be fine. Um, the brush that I'm using is the Morphe M213. It is this like kind of flat edge, but also kind of fluffy. And we're going to be using that very top flat edge to define just our top lash line. So I'm using that darkest color and just dabbing the top edge, not the sides. And going in. And um, I try to stay as close to my lash line as possible. Just go all the way from the outer to the inner corner. Um, I do try to stay a little thicker on the outside corner, I guess. When I've gone all the way from the outer to inner corner, I try to kind of go back over what I've done. And I got anything that's looking crazy. I kind of try to even it out a little bit. But we're going to go back and kind of fix that. Okay, so with both eyes done, if you're happy with how that smudge brush made that look, then you're done. Um, sometimes I'm a little paranoid that it's a little too severe. So I'll go in with my Morphe E18 smudge brush that you see me use on my under eyes a lot. And I'll go in with a lighter brown, like a way, way lighter brown like this guy right here. And I will literally go right on my lashes. Like close my eyes and go straight on my lashes. And I'll do a little bit of smudging. Just to make sure that we're soft. Like literally right on your lashes because if you go on the line that you actually put that product on you're gonna take it a little too high or at least I take it on a little too high than I want it but don't get yourself in the eye next I put on my mascara and I am going in with my Stila huge extreme lash mascara and I'll be putting on heavy-duty amounts of this so I'll be putting on this coat and then I'll be putting on a second coat later Next, I like to put on a little bit of a shimmer on my eyes. If you want to stay with this matte, that is perfectly fine. I think it looks great. I don't even use an eyeshadow. I actually use um, my Smashbox Spotlight Palette Pearl. And it has these three highlights in here that I absolutely love. And I use this super, super light pink. I don't even know if it looks pink in the, um, in the pan. I'm not even sure it looks pink when it's on. So I'm just going to put that on a lid. Um, I got this flat shader brush in my Ipsy box and it's really pretty. Uh, but I have no idea who it is because there's no number. But it's like the perfect flat shader brush. And I'm not really trying to cover up what I defined my lashes with. But, um, and it's not super sparkly either. It's just something to kind of highlight with. And nothing falls on my eyes with it. So just patting that on each of my lids. And then you're done with the top of your lid. And so if you only like stuff on the top of your lids, you can totally stop here and that's fine. I like stuff on the bottom of my lips because I have big eyes. So for my bottom lash line, I have been going in with this Marc Jacobs uh, highliner, I think it's called. And it's in the color brownie. Um, and it's this nice, rich, dark brown color. And I like using this because it really makes the eyeshadow that I put on under there stay, just doesn't budge all day long. So just going to put that very thin, not on my waterline, on the edge of my waterline. All along my bottom lashes very thin or as thick as you want it if you want it thick go thick it doesn't have to be perfect we're gonna fix it all right once i have my eyeliner on i like to take my sigma flat definer e15 brush and i like to dip that into that lighter brown that i used to kind of smudge out my top 
brown uh, eyeshadow. And I take that and lightly smudge and smooth out that brownie. I'm not going crazy, we're just smoothing it. Just as if you were putting on the eyeshadow by itself. Next, I want to take that dark brown that we defined our top lash line with and do the same thing. Next, I'm going to take that same smudge brush, the E18 brush, I'm going to kind of dab it into that light brown. And then we're going to smudge this out so it's not severe. Okay, if you want to stop here, you can. That's perfectly fine. Um, some people like the brown eyeliner. If you want to take the brownie and put that in your uh, waterline or tightline with it, I think that would look great. But we all know I like my black eyeliner. So I'm going to be taking the Marc Jacobs Highliner in Blacker and I'm going to be putting it in my water lines and uh, tight lining with it. Now I'm going to put one last coat of mascara on my top lashes and a coat on my bottom lashes. In that same highlighting palette by Smashbox, I take that lightest color, which is called Glow of Fuse Pearl, this whitish one. I put that one under my brow bones and my inner corners. And the eyes are all done for this look. So now we're gonna finish up the face because ghostly white is not normally how I want to go into work. So a brush I've been using lately is this Sephora Pro Precision Powder Brush. It's number 59. It's old um, and I haven't used it in a while, um, but I have been using it lately uh, and it's awesome. You just move on to other things and you kind of forget some, about some other things that you were using in the past and it's, it's great. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm. I don't think that Tarte always had that coconutty smell. I'm pretty sure they didn't, and then they recently added it, and I love it. But I'm just doing that 3 CPO shade with my temples and my cheeks and my jawline. And then if you have a big forehead or a five head or a six head like me, you want to get some serious bronzer there too to connect everything together for my nose I do use my Kat Von D number four brush just to do some light bronzing on my nose on the side right there and then I do use my big ass Morphe E41 brush to bronze my neck and my chest For blush, it's just a light blush. Um, you guys know I like my Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes. One of my favorites for in the summer is this color called Sensual. It's kind of got a little, got some orangey tones in it, for the lack of a better description on my part. And I like to use my big angle Morphe brush to put this on. And when I have a light eye, I really try to make sure I'm really light on my blush. Not that I'm super light. Not that I'm super heavy on my blush anyway. For highlight, I go back into that same Smashbox palette and I use the Crank It Up Pearl. Um, this is more of like a flesh toned 
um, this middle one here. It's more of a flesh-toned type of highlight, at least for me. And I'm using the Morphe M501 brush, and I just highlight my temples and my tops of my cheeks, making sure to stay out of my eye bags. And it's really just not, it's not a flashy highlight. It's, it seems barely there to me. Maybe other people don't interpret that that way. But it's not the most flashy highlight you could use, for sure. I'm going to put that here. And my nose. My cupid's bow. So the first thing I'm going to be putting on my lips is from Bite Beauty and it is the Mousse Bouche Liquified Lipstick in the color Caramelize and it's a nude fresh fry. I'm a huge fan of Bite Beauty lipsticks. They're very, very comfortable. And then you can just stop it here. This is a very pretty color. It can be very simple on your lips. This whole look is very simple. Um, I kind of like putting this Yate glitter flip on top of it, and it's in the color Whisper. Um, <laughs> you get glitter whenever you blot your lips, and when you uh, kiss your husband um, by in the morning, like on the forehead or something, he will get glitter on his face. I do that guy to keep lipstick from getting on my teeth. Then I go in with my NYX Control Freak Eyebrow Gel to get my eyebrows in place. And hopefully, not hopefully, they do make my eyebrows stay there. Next, we're going to set all this with the Urban Decay D Slick Makeup Setting Spray. And of course, my fan to set it all. Alright people, so this is the finished look. I hope that this is something that um, some of you would be able to take and learn for your own makeup routines for work. Um, you can, you know, totally take things down or take things up from this depending on how much time you have in the morning. This actual routine and this look is something that I have been complimented on and it is not hard to do. So I felt like this uh, specific look was all about something that was easy to do and was work appropriate. I hope this tutorial did something for you today. If it did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time. Bye guys.